So I played Elon's story quest, and wow, okay. It's probably my favorite story quest so far, at least until I seriously start ranking them. It had a lot of twists, the story was good, and was overall pretty entertaining. There's a lot to get into, but first, I want to talk about this stuff. Come on, hear me out! I'm telling you, this is the single best batch of Sunsetias ever! If you won't take them, I'll just have to partner with them instead. And neither of us wants that. <laughs> okay, well, when you put it that way, I'll accept your asking price. I'll take all your stock. Don't sell a single one to Second Life. <laughs> Dude, Bolai is so freaking toxic. You don't even know if this merchant is legit. Even if his Sunsetias are good, you don't know if the price is worth it. And the seller is well aware of your relationship with Second Life. Don't you find it suspicious that he didn't say a word about Second Life until after it was clear you weren't convinced about the price? Also, why would the Sunsetia seller not want to partner with them? If Second Life is willing to buy, then what's the problem? If you remember what happened in Ganyu's quest, we exposed tax evasion and other forms of illegal activity with both Wanyo Boutique and Second Life because they hate each other that much. This fruit merchant played Bolai like a fiddle and emotionally manipulated him into buying the Sunsetias. This is just pathetic, dude. Like, really? When we talk to him outside of the quest, he talks about the Sunsetias and gives us a few of them for free. At this point, I'm convinced, regardless whether they were legitimate, he must have known that he still overpaid. Dude, take this L. So anyways, about this uh, society for fish price research. Fish price research. Fish price research. Look, I won't fault anyone for not noticing, but you do have to realize the irony of how this sequence played out. Uncle Gal was putting up these prices, which, do the math, the prices are pure nonsense. And right after that, we claim to be from the Society of Fish Price Research while proceeding to egregiously ignore the blatantly faulty fish prices right in front of us. Like, okay, Yelon, this is kinda embarrassing. You literally claim to be a fish price researcher while ignoring fish prices. Aren't you supposed to be cunning and calculating? Well, this was quite the miscalculation. For some context, Gao is indeed engaging in some form of price manipulation via anchoring, but I won't go into detail here. Go check out his wiki page if you're interested. So, you're looking to buy a wineware set? Oh, now I can see that you're a connoisseur, so I won't bother trying to con you. I trust you understand our shop quite well? Oh no. Oh my god. I do not like that quote at all. Wow. This might be a super nitpicky detail, but a lot of what could be said about the cultural context in this quote is like the icing on the cake of scams in Liyue. I don't know for sure if this lady is actually being serious or not about scamming Juri should he be less knowledgeable. It just goes to show how normalized and ingrained the scam culture is. Like wow, I'd immediately feel suspicious if I heard that from my seller. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed these random miscellaneous thoughts. Now I suppose I should actually talk about the main story, because I do have some important takeaways from it. The Tianshu selection process was pretty valuable for fleshing out Li Wei's internal affairs. We got valuable insight on inner political mechanics in the Li Wei Qixing, and how this selection played out is quite telling. We'll get to the plot twist later, but first, I want to talk about two out of the three candidates. We didn't really get a lot about Chen Wei's actual plans and motives, but based on his personality and economic background, I don't think he'd work for Li Wei's best interests. It's said he's stubborn and cares little about others' feelings, which means, to me, he'll be someone who won, lacks empathy on the problems facing the average person in Li Wei, and two, if he were to make mistakes, his ego may get in the way of fixing bad decisions and mistakes, and perhaps strained relationships. Yelan even said his plans are lacking in detail, so we can bet that some of them might go horribly wrong and it's doubtful he'd even acknowledge it or accept responsibility. Now, Mingbo on the other hand, I think this guy gets it. His manifesto is about people's livelihoods, and if you watch my other Li Wei video, you'd know that I completely ripped Li Wei for failing to provide people's basic needs. 
If he got the role, then perhaps he brings those ideas to the table. I think he knows about the uh, lack of access to education and the myriad of disenfranchised poor people turning to the treasure hoarders. So I think he'd be pushing for things like universal education, social security nets, and market regulation to prevent the uh, countless scams that are seen on a daily basis. He would be a good start, but he needs to get better at public speaking, or at least get someone to speak for him. The lack of communication skills is an incredibly crippling flaw. Liwei's culture is so conservatively ingrained, for example, think about their rejection to rock and roll, that he would struggle to popularize his ideas to the general public. You would need a strong communicator to move the masses and shift the conversation in your favor. We know that his proposed reforms would limit the powers of the wealthiest people, and so I have little faith that without popular support and public pressure, his reforms could actually pass. And now for our third candidate, the man behind the entire story. You said a lowly commoner like me could never be seen as a serious candidate for the Tianshu, no matter how hard I work. Yes, just look at your two competitors. Chen Wei had wealth. Ming Bo had reputation. But you? You had nothing. You were just another nobody. Not. I've sacrificed years of my life studying and reflecting to prepare myself for this position. And in the end, I even had to poison my own teacher. You really think I'd put myself through all that just to become your little puppet? Wow. This man was the sole reason this story quest existed. He poisoned Uncle Tian, which forced him to hold a selection process for his successor. People have been complaining about NPCs outshining the featured story quest character since Tepe, but wow, Juri took it to another level. With that said though, I think it's fine, because the failures of past quests with this criticism was the lack of focus and development on the featured characters. In this case though, Yelan suffers from no such underdevelopment. With all that said, this man was absolutely insane. Throughout the quest, he was always one step ahead of us. Well, by us, I mean Yelan, because we mostly just stood around and watched Yelan do stuff. We never figured out about the poison until after we overheard the conversation, and we couldn't get any evidence out of investigating Jerry at all. The only reason we found the hideout and discovered this plot was because of Yusupov. I thought the Fatui had a reputation for being sneaky, yet he allowed himself to be followed. If Yusupov was as crafty and cautious as Jerry in going to the hideout, Juryi would have achieved a complete victory. Uncle Tian would have died from the poison, Juryi would have become the Tianshu with a clean record, and the Fatui that tried to manipulate him would have all been eliminated. It's honestly a bit scary to see how we were that close to complete disaster. And this is where I get into speculation territory, because Li Wei is right to be scared. A so-called nobody with some financial backing came this close to infiltrating Li Wei's government. If anything, this incident speaks to the weakness of the Qixing as an institution. There are seven positions in the Qixing, and so usually they'll have around seven Qixing selections in a lifetime, barring special circumstances like the Adepti, but it's unlikely the Adepti will come back. Again, the Qixing of today might be fine, but Juryi has proven to us that these positions are not safe, and sooner or later, someone of malevolent self-serving motivations will eventually win. And then they themselves would have the power over who joins the Qixing as a future replacement. This weakness in the system has the potential to be exploited and snowball until all of the Qixing is ruled by vested interests. Juri would have been the first domino to fall had he succeeded, but there will be plenty of opportunities for dominoes to fall in the long term. Now, granted, the selection procedure in this quest seems to uniquely apply to the position of Tianshu. We're not sure how the other positions are selected. Perhaps there are more democratic methods for the other positions. The Tianshu candidate is nominated by the current Tianshu and requires final approval from the other members. So the Qixing could, in theory, have the power to prevent malicious candidates like Zhi from taking a seat. This seems to be a good measure against corruption, but leaves open the risk of collusion. Future Qixing members may not be so incorruptible as to reject bribes and deals under the table in order to be bought votes or approval. But these scenarios are very far away from the present day of Teyvat, and there's plenty of time to reform society as to prevent future threats of corruption. Uncle Tian is fine now, 
so his position will be solid for a few more years. So the Qixing is safe. For now. Now lastly, we got a Fatui Harbinger name drop. I actually don't have much to say about Regrader really. Things could really go either way with him. We know Yelan stole his jacket, which is supposed to be a gift to the Tsaritsa, so the story seemingly wants to foreshadow a confrontation between the two. It's too early to tell, so we'll see. All in all, this was a pretty fun and engaging story quest. What I really liked was the depth of all the NPCs that were on display. This was an excellent cast of characters, and everyone was intriguing in their own way. Everyone seems to have their own little thing going. Anyways, that's the end of this review. If you have any opinions, I would love to uh, hear them in the comments. Hope you all enjoyed, and see you all next time.